let me show you a case of calcified pleural plaques. On this radiograph, the first thing that jumps out to me are these angular, sort of scalloped opacities in the mid lungs. This one on the right has a thin rim of higher density. And when you look further, you'll see high density thickening of the pleura laterally, like over here on the right and over here on the left and over the right hemidiaphragm. On the lateral view, again, we see these angular structures in the retrosternal clear space and linear high density along the diaphragm. This is a case of calcified pleural plaques from asbestos exposure. This patient worked for many years as an insulator and was exposed to asbestos at work. On chest x-rays, these plaques will have this angulated, sort of scalloped appearance, and because of that, this has been described as the holly leaf sign. Also, some people have described the plaques you see in tangent as a dripping candle appearance. If you don't recognize these as plural in origin, you could see how they can be confused for lung masses. And I should mention here that not all asbestos-related pleural plaques will be calcified. The reason why we can see these so clearly on x-ray is because they're pretty densely calcified. But when you don't have that, it's much harder to see on radiographs and are many times not perceptible at all. The other thing to keep in mind is that if they aren't calcified, it's difficult to distinguish them from extra pleural fat, which are usually bilateral and symmetric, frequently seen in patients with larger body habitus. On CT, it's easy to tell the difference between pleural plaques and extra pleural fat based on the density. Here's the accompanying CT. This is the typical appearance of asbestos-related pleural plaques with an outer rim of calcification and an inner rim of soft tissue. These classically involve the pleura next to the ribs and the diaphragmatic pleura and are most commonly found over the lower 6 to 10th ribs, but not deep into the costophrenic sulci. Also, most cases are going to have bilateral involvement of the pleura. These long plaques should be distinguished from talc pleuridesis. This is a patient who had a talc pleuridesis on the right side, and this looks different from asbestos-related pleural disease for a few reasons. First, pleuridesis is usually unilateral, and asbestos-related pleural disease will be bilateral. Now, of course, a patient can have talc pleuridesis done on both sides. Second, what you usually see in pleuridesis are these hyperdense nodules in the pleura, rather than really dense calcifications like you see with asbestos-related pleural plaques. Also, the plaques in asbestos will be elongated, whereas in pleurodesis, they have this more nodular appearance. And then in talc pleurodesis, oftentimes you do find plaques all the way down into the costophrenic sulci, and this area is usually spared with asbestos-related pleural plaques. Asbestos-related pleural plaques take a long time to develop, usually at least 20 years after the exposure, which is why we still see a lot of patients with asbestos-related pleural disease today, despite the fact that its use in construction has significantly declined since the mid-70s from regulations or outright banned in some countries. Here's a graph showing the number of deaths related to asbestosis in the United States. You can see that after a multi-decade increase in the number of cases, we're now starting to see a decline. And the same trend is also true in the United Kingdom. If you do have a patient with a history of asbestos exposure or you see a patient with calcified pleural plaques, there's a few things that you have to keep in mind. The first is asbestosis. Asbestosis is the interstitial lung disease that's related to asbestos exposure. And it's important to note that you don't have to have pleural plaques to have asbestosis. It can happen in isolation. Also, it's important to differentiate the terminology. Asbestosis is what happens in the lungs from asbestos exposure, whereas asbestos-related pleural disease is what you get in the pleural space. The second entity that you have to keep in mind is round atelectasis. This is pretty common, and you'll see these next to the pleural plaques. And there's four hallmarks of round atelectasis. One, it's a focus of volume loss. So you'll see signs of volume loss, like the fissure will be pulled in 
or the diaphragm will be pulled up. Second, the focus of atelectasis will be next to the pleura. Third is that the pleura will be abnormal. And then fourth is you'll have architectural distortion, which is also called the comet tail sign around the area of atelectasis. So this appearance right here is fairly typical of round atelectasis, but it's not necessary that these areas are round. You can have kind of linear or band-like areas of round atelectasis as well. The third entity to look out for is lung cancer. Patients with asbestos exposure have an increased risk of lung cancer, so it's important to have a high index of suspicion when you see nodules in these patients. And then finally, mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is a malignant primary tumor of the pleura that's linked to asbestos exposure. Things to look out for are any new pleural nodules or masses, new pleural effusions, new or enlarged lymph nodes along the pleura itself, the diaphragm, next to the IVC, or in the internal mammary region. Here's a patient with asbestos-related pleural disease, and you can see on this radiograph that they have blunting of the right costophrenic angle. That would make me very suspicious that they have a pleural effusion and mesothelioma. So this patient got a CT scan, and you could see that there's asymmetric soft tissue thickening of the pleura, particularly down here by the diaphragm, where you could see that it's scalloping the margin of the liver. On the axial images, you can see this nodular pleural thickening on the right compared to the benign calcified and non-calcified pleural plaques on the left side. Okay, this has been a review of asbestos-related pleural plaques on chest x-ray and CT. Remember the holly leaf sign and the dripping candle sign. And remember those four entities we talked about if you see a patient with asbestos exposure. Asbestosis, round atelectasis, lung cancer, and mesothelioma. If you have any questions about this topic or any other chest radiology topic, let me know in the comments. Thanks.